Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another fantastic episode of Star Wars The Complete History. Today we're going to be reading a lot of different things and we're actually going to be starting the Clone Wars which is pretty exciting. So I would like you guys to check out my channel if you've not done so already. Leave a like rating if you do enjoy the series. Comment down below with your guys thoughts on this episode and let's get right into it guys. So Splintering of the Republic 22.5 to 22 BBY. The final months leading up to the Clone Wars were a chaotic dance of shuffling alliances and desperate overtures. When war eventually broke out, it almost came as a relief. The, se the secession of planets Ando and Sai Mirth, three months prior to the Battle of Geonosis, marked a sort of tipping point. The two worlds and their sector fiefdoms brought the total of separatist planets to more than 6,000. The refugee relief movement struggled to contain displaced citizens, leading to civil unrest. Angry shadows, angry showdowns occurred throughout the galaxy, such as the one on Naboo, where Kasoy spice miners on one of the planet's moons refused to give up their landing strip to accommodate refugee freighters. Ando, in particular, became became a microcosm of the greater galactic conflict when the Aquilish of the Andon free colonies refused to acknowledge the secession ordered by their walrus-faced brethren of the homeworld. The always belligerent 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 that's what it looks like Alaguish now looked as if they might tear themselves apart regardless of what happened outside their borders. Weeks later, Senator Garm Bell Iblis of the Corlean Sector announced that his sector had closed its borders and would no longer participate in future discussion. With a cry of Corlean for Corleans, the Republic lost the, the support of one of its founding core worlds. Chancellor Palpatine responded to Corlea's withdrawal with an offer to Count Dooku to negotiate a peaceful solution to, the to their differences. Dooku didn't show, and the Republic shook from a rapid-fire string of prominent secessions. The Elrud, Danhar, Tantar, and Sulius sectors all joined the CIS, making the entire Rim War leg of the Rima trade route inaccessible to Republic shipping. The Lahar sector followed suit, bringing with it the planets Agmar and ur and the Mirgoshi Hyperspace Crossroads. The Abrion Sector gives the CIS more than 200 farming planets when it seceded. The expansion region planet of Tyne joined the Separatists following the outbreak, of, uh, outbreak on their homeworld of building-eating insects called Stone Mites, believed to be a biologically engineered terrorist weapon. The mathematical given of yag Huel left when their ruling body, Calculus, determined that the risks of staying with the Republic were greater than or equal to the risks of succeeding or seceding. Not everyone on the Republic side was content to sit and watch. On board the Republic Judicial Department, Corvette, Scarlet Thranton, Captain Zordior Sky Slyke and his crew withdrew from Republic service to wage their own private war against Separatist forces in the Sulius sector. Slake's army soon became known as Freedom's Sons. Two weeks after Slake's resignation, the Republic dispatched Jedi-led task forces to reign in the rogue captain. Master Neha Hylkon, a Corlean Jedi and descendant of early Jedi hero Carrion Halcon commanded the cruiser Pluri Pluroid Boydkin on its mission to the Sluis sector. It took two weeks, but Halcon eventually pinned down Slake, who promptly turned the tables on the Jedi Master and stole the Plurind Boydink. Mission to Ancien 22 BBY Not every development was disadvantageous for the Republic. 
the simple world of Anzian in the Mid-Rim responded favorably to a Jedi diplomatic mission and elected to remain a member of the Republic, rejecting a Separatist invitation extended by Commerce Guild Magistrate Shu Mai. The Jedi team of Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luminara Un Unduli, and Baris Offe received credit for the outcome. Though Ancien had little to offer in the way of natural resources, its involvement in a number of ancient treaties, including the Malarian Alliance and the Ketumen, Ketuminti Mutual Military Treaty, meant that Ancien's defection would have pulled an entire web of planets into the Separatist fold. But a closer look at the Ancien victory revealed an unpleasant truth. If the Republic's successes occurred only when it managed to prevent a deflection, the Confederacy could not help but gain power. Gain in power. Calls for the passage of the Military Creation Act increased in volume. Terrorist bombings on Coruscant continued. Diplomacy could not stan stanch a bleeding artery. Unless the Republic wanted to concede victory already, war appeared inevitable. The Clone Wars. The Battle of Geonosis. 22 BBY. Formerly the planet's queen, Padme Amidala had become Naboo's representative to the Republic Senate after the ascension of Queen Hamila, or Jamila, it could be either. Padme had also become one of the most vocal opponents of the Military Creation Act. Upon arriving on Coruscant to vote on the measure, her starship exploded on the landing pad. Padme survived the assassination attempt, which had been ordered by Count Dooku on behalf of Newt Gunray and the contracted and contracted out to Django Fett, who had enlisted his own subcontractor, Zam Wessler, Wessel, Zam Wessel. The Jedi Council assigned Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker to protect the Senator. The second attempt on Padme's life, involving poisonous Kauhuns, also failed. But this time, the Jedi apprehended Zam Wessler. Before the Claudite shapeshifter could reveal the identity of the other plotter, Django Fett killed her with a toxic dart. In light of the violence, the Council decided that Padme would be safer on her home world. Anakin accompanied her to Naboo, where he found himself struggling with his increasingly powerful feelings of infatuation. Padme tried to resist her own attraction to Anakin, but the two soon fell in love. On Coruscant, Obi-Wan investigated Jango Fett's dart and connected it to the clones on Kamino. He could not locate anything about the planet in the Jedi Archives thanks to Count Dooku's erasure, of the information ten years prior, and so he decided to travel to Kamino himself. The Kaminoans were happy to host a rep representative from the Jedi, still believing that their growth-accelerated army, now nearly one million strong, belonged to Jedi Master Sifo Dias. During his tour of the Tipoka City facilities, Obi-Wan met Jango Fett, the army's prime clone, and his son Boba Fett. Convinced that Jango had been behind the attacks on Padme, Obi-Wan tried to bring the bounty hunter to Coruscant for questioning. Jango bested Obi-Wan in combat and escaped with Boba in Slave One. Anakin had recently been disturbed by vague and disturbing nightmares of his mother's torture. He left Naboo with Padme and traveled to Tatooine, where he learned that Shmi Skywalker had been freed from slavery years ago to become the wife of a local moisture farmer, Clegg Lars. At the Lars homestead, Anakin met Clegg's son, Owen Lars, and Owen's girlfriend, Beru, and enjoyed a reunion with C-3PO, Anakin's home-built protocol droid. But Shmi was not there. She had been kidnapped by a tribe of Tusken Raiders weeks before. Anakin tracked down his mother, who had been tortured and was near death. In a Tusken camp, when she died in his arms, Anakin welcomed the liberating fury of the dark side. He slaughtered the entire Tusken clan, including the children. After burying Shmi, Anakin intercepted an urgent message from Obi-Wan, who had tracked Jango Fett to the droid foundries on Geonosis. Obi-Wan had learned of Count Dooku's involvement with the galaxy's major commerce factions. With the Trade Federation, Techno Union, Commerce Guild, Corporate Alliance, and Intergalactic Banking Clan officially joining the Separatist cause, the Republic faced grave danger. Obi-Wan would not escape to deliver his news. However, a squad of droidicas had captured him and locked him in a Geonosian dungeon. 
Anakin and Padme rushed to free their friend, but became prisoners themselves. Back on Coruscant, Chancellor Palpatine, Mace Windu, and Master Yoda agreed that the war was the only way to stop the Separatists. Representative Jar Jar Binks put, forward a mo put forth a motion that gave emergency war powers to Palpatine, who then announced the creation of the Grand Army of the Republic. Yoda departed for Kamino. While the Jedi still weren't sure who had orchestrated the Clone Army's creation, they could not afford to wait for volunteers and conscripts to build a standing army. And if the Separatists were involved in, the crea in creating the Clone Army, as Jango's dual role seemed to indicate, the Jedi wanted to prevent Dooku's forces from claiming the clones for themselves. The Kaminoans gladly turned over the first 200,000 clones to Yoda, and he led them to Geonosis at top speed. Obi-Wan, Obi Anakin, and Padme received death sentences from Dooku to be carried out by the teeth and claws of wild beasts in the Geonosian execution arena. Meanwhile, 200 Jedi Knights, led by Mace Windu, arrived outside the arena in their Jedi Starfighters. They failed to force a surrender from Count Dooku, and the arena exploded in violence as Dooku unleashed the super battle droids. Mace Windu beheaded Jango Fett, yet Dooku's forces held the upper hand until Yoda's armies arrived abroad, aboard laser-spewing Republic gunships. The battle quickly moved to the dust plains of Geonosis, where both sides heavily equipped where both sides' heavy equipment clashed with stunning might. Geonosian starfighters sparred with clone gunships, Commerce Guild spider droids blasted beetle-like ATTEs, huge SPHAT cannons carved up Trade Federation core ships. Elsewhere on the battlefield, trained at Clays and Nexus devoured clone troopers, and Count Dooku's lowest-ranking dark ac acolytes lost their lives in a tank battle with Mace Windu. Dooku himself escaped to a secret hangar, where he was confronted by Obi-Wan and Anakin. The Count left Obi-Wan beaten and Anakin without his right arm, and may have killed them both if not for Yoda, who arrived and launched a whirlwind attack. Dooku barely escaped with his life. By the battle's conclusion, only Republic soldiers remained. Though considered a victory, the cost to the Republic was high. Thousands of clone troopers' deaths and scores of fallen Jedi. Most of the Confederates seized battle droids and heavy equipment escaped into space aboard core ships. Geonosian leader Poggle, the Lesser, was nowhere to be found, although, the second in, although his second-in-command, Sunfak, had been assassinated by a squad of clone commandos during the fighting. That's the Republic commando, that's a, a little nod to Republic commando right there. The Geonosian workers retreated into the catacombs far beneath the, spy, the spire hives where they resisted every effort to dislodge them. War had been joined, and the Republic's new clones would give them a name to the conflict that had begun. For the next round of attacks, Anakin's es Anakin escorted Padme back to Naboo, where, she was, where they were secretly married. The only witnesses besides the Naboo holy man who presided over the ceremony were C-3PO, and R2-D2. So guys, that is the conclusion of the episode. Some awesome Clone Wars stuff in there. An awesome reference to Star Wars Republic Commando. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, as always, I encourage you to leave a like rating. Comment down below with what you guys thought of this episode. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys later.